What's up guys, it's Andy Scon, and today we'll be talking about 7 fantasy baseball pitchers that everyone is sleeping on right now, and you can take advantage of that by drafting them well below how they will perform this season. I just recently posted a hitters version of this list, so if you guys haven't seen that one, go check it out. The link will be in the description below or in the top right corner right now. Surprisingly, last year, I landed on a couple of pretty big names to break out like Tristan McKenzie and Michael Kopech. But that came with a few duds like Hyungjin Ryu. But that was last year and for this year we got 7 new sleepers to draft for the 2023 MLB season. Just like last year, there will be 5 starters and 2 relievers. And I'll be using Yahoo Fantasy for draft rankings as it has the average draft positions along with how Yahoo ranks them. Although other sites like ESPN will definitely have some players way off from others, it can be assumed that all players are roughly in the same spot, give or take a few. As we gear up for another exciting year of baseball, it's time to start thinking about the players who might not be on everyone's radar, but could make a significant impact on your fantasy baseball team. But before we get onto the video, could you guys please hit the like and subscribe button? Currently, only 3% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if y'all do, not only would it help me grow my channel, but it also encourages me to create more videos like this one for you guys. And without further ado, let's get on to the video. First off, we have a very popular sleeper among the fantasy baseball community, and that is Justin Steele. Given that he posted a 3.1 ERA and over 125 strikeouts last year into his age 27 season, he should be a mid-round pick as a starter with some injury risk. But when healthy, he gets you strikeouts at an efficient rate to ERA categories. However, questions about his durability over a long season put into question his value. Fantasy players know that if he only pitches 80 to 100 innings, he isn't worth a pick even as late as this one. But Steele was just in his second season in the majors and his first season as a full major leaguer. This year, after a season under his belt, he should be accustomed partly to the trials of a major league season and be less likely for injuries this time around. If he could toss 160 to 170 innings at the same efficiency we got last year, then we got a steal in the 22nd round. Furthermore, there's some optimism that he can be even better than the numbers he had last year. In August and September, Steele made a visible change to his repertoire and threw his slider much more with it being his best whiff pitch. He saw a 32.7% whiff rate on it, which is a very encouraging sign of improvement down the stretch that can translate into this season as he can keep that repertoire that gave him so much success late in the season. In the same spots fantasy-wise, we have Hunter Brown, starting pitcher of the Houston Astros. In his limited debut last year, he pitched 20 dazzling innings with a .89 ERA and 22 strikeouts, showing Houston at least in some part that he is capable of pitching at the major league level. Although he will not post these numbers across a full major league season, as hitters get tape on him, projections still estimate him to have an ERA in the mid to high threes with strikes uh, with a strikeout per nine of around 10. That is great production to get in this round, and if he stays healthy and pitches 150 to 170 innings with the club, and possibly touch 200 strikeouts if all breaks right. However, the caveat here is the Astros pitching rotation. The Astros have a very good pitching rotation, and it's very deep, with almost no lockdown slots outside of Lance McCullers and Framber Valdez. If Hunter Brown has to spend even a couple of weeks in the AAA uh, affiliate for the Astros, or have to, as he has to wait for another Astros pitcher to get injured or lose his place in the rotation, then that could really hurt his value. However, I just believe that his stuff is too good for the Astros to keep him down in the minor leagues, and he should be on the opening day roster and also on your fantasy teams. Moving a tiny bit further up, we have Andrew Heaney, who should be draftable in the late teens or early 20s at the latest. In the latter half of the 2022 season, Heaney simply dominated, with 110 strikeouts in 72 and a two-thirds innings, leading to a ridiculous strikeouts per nine of 13.2. However, this isn't really far-fetched considering that he has always had a case per 9 of around 10 to 11. When you draft Heaney, you're guaranteeing yourself a good amount of strikeouts whenever he takes them out. The problem here is, though, however, is his volume. Obviously, as Heaney pitched less than 100 innings last year and entering his age 32 season, we maybe even begin to wonder if he's beginning the early stages of running out of fuel. However, all reports coming out of Texas are positive around Heaney, and with a deep Rangers rotation, 
Andrew Heaney can afford to stretch out between stars here and there and hopefully stay healthy throughout the season. 100 inning, 180 innings, like his workload in his monster 2018 season, may seem a bit too much to hope for for fantasy managers, and Heaney owners should instead pull for around 150 innings for the Heaney pick to pay off big time. Now, moving up a little bit higher than this, we have my favorite sleeper on this list and Jeffrey Springs of the always underrated Tampa Bay Rays. Draftable in the mid-teens, Springs quietly posted a great 2.46 ERA across 135 innings with a 9.6 Ks per nine, due in most part to a grip change in his fastball and slider leading to increased movement. Springs' breakout should be sustainable across multiple seasons, and this year he should post an ERA around three with similar strikeout numbers. In fact, his strikeout rate of 26% mimics that of pitchers drafted much higher up, like Zach Gallen, with similar ERA numbers. Fantasy owners are getting an elite strikeout guy that just gets guys out, making sure that their ERA stays low. Furthermore, last year he was just getting stretched out as a starter, only pitching 135 innings and coming out of the bullpen on some occasions. Most projection systems only account for a small uptick in innings pitched or none at all, but fantasy owners should hope for those extra starts to equate to around 160 innings of elite production, and that's a steal in the mid-teens pick. Our last starter sleeper of the year is going to be Alex Cobb of the San Francisco Giants. Last year, Cobb was a workhorse in the modern game, pitching 140 innings to a 3.71 ERA and over 150 strikeouts. However, the encouraging part is that he was wildly underperforming in what terms of his expected metrics would show. XFIP, which is the expected form of fielding independent pitching, calculated by using expected outcomes through launch angle and exit velocity, was much lower at 2.89 compared to 3.71, which was his actual ERA. This means that Cobb got really unlucky in terms of his home run data, and in a pitcher-friendly ballpark like Oriole that is so close to sea level that balls go to die, that is extremely uncommon. We can expect and hope for some serious positive regression here in this category, and Cobb can post an ERA in the low threes with that same elite strikeout rate of an over 9Ks per 9 and a lot of innings pitched. Cobb is already guaranteed a full season with health by the Giants organization who signed him to a two-year $10 million contract last year. And there is no reason that he shouldn't be able to post a 160 to 170 innings of productive baseball. Our first sleeper reliever is going to have to be Evan Phillips, the current closer of the team who should receive a lot of save chances in the Los Angeles Dodgers. However, Phillips is going in the mid-teens selection in terms of relievers, simply due to him not having the closer role for multiple years and not being that guy such as Kenley Jansen, who you shouldn't draft by the way. And while it is true that Evan Phillips does not have the closer role down on paper, he has very little competition his way, with Daniel Hudson going down with injury and not being ready for opening day, and Bruce Star Gratterall being inconsistent and not a high strikeout guy. Phillips provides that, and that's why I think the Dodgers are going with that role of with that closer role for him on opening day. More encouragingly, the Dodgers have preferred to get one closer at a time rather than a committee, with a longtime closer Kenley Jansen manning the helm for them for a lot of years, followed by Craig Kimbrell. I believe that Phillips is going to have the benefit of the doubt come opening day as the Dodgers closer, and if he produces, we have a top 5 closer in the game, and we drafted him as a top 15 one. Lastly, if you're like me and procrastinate on relief pitchers until very late in the draft, then you know the feeling of just looking for anyone with a pulse who can give you saves. And if that happens to be you during draft day, then may I suggest drafting Cubs pitcher Michael Fulmer in the very last round, or if he has risen over that time, in the later rounds. All signs in Cubs camp point to him being the Cubs closer for this season, as he's looked very good with an improved sweeping slider that already worked nicely in Detroit last year when paired with his sinker and cutter. The value here is that he's technically still up in the air when it comes to who's going to win the closer role between him, Brad Boxberger, and Brandon Hughes. However, Brandon Hughes being the only lefty is probably going to be used as a lefty specialist whenever the Cubs have to face three or two good lefties in a row, and Fulmer has simply outplayed Boxberger this spring. Furthermore, Boxberger serves better as a setup man anyways in Milwaukee at least, and is most likely signed to Chicago to be one. Best case scenario here is Fulmer becomes the full-time closer, 
and pitches well enough to get traded midseason to a contending team that also gives them the closer role to close games. Or the Cubs are competitive enough to give Fulmer a bunch of save chances. And in category leagues, Fulmer can be a league winner right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below new video ideas. Um, fantasy baseball season is in full swing right now, so that'll be the focus for the videos. The Corey Seager video should be coming out next video, probably tomorrow. And then maybe a prospects or the positional breakdown coming out either next week or at the end of this week. Anyways, I hope you guys do good in your drafts. Comment down below if I missed any players and I'll see you guys in the next one.